Greetings, my name is Shelby and I want to thank you for tuning into my channel today called Shelby Artist. It's great to have you here and I hope that you're doing well. Today is March 26th, 2024, Tuesday. And as God's prophetess, he has strongly placed it on my mind and heart and spirit at this moment, 1027 a.m. <laughs> to talk about the subject of fornication again. Because no matter how much I talk about it, people don't seem to care. There are many sins, lying, theft, murder, etc. But fornication is one sin among many. The word sin means to miss the mark. The mark, the target, is love. Perfect love is God. So when you fall short of God, you fall short of love. That is sin. God loves us. That is why he gave us directives in his word of how to behave properly in life with one another. Okay. So I guess you can call this a daily bread. I'm reading two scriptures, both in the New Testament, okay? This is the part of the Bible specifically for Christianity. And the first is in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. The other one is in Revelation 21, verse 8. Um, when I think of the go-to verse about this video, it would be the Revelation one. But when I looked it up, I found both. So let me read them to you. Okay, the first one, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, written by the Apostle Paul. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God, which is love. Moving on, Revelation 21, eight, I'm not sure who wrote it. I think John. Okay. He's referred to as an apostle, just like Paul would be. Revelation 21, eight, but the fearful, the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay, so as I said, this was the particular one this video is about. Um, I read you the King James version. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's my least preferred version, but it's always the first one that comes up online. So let me see. Let's go to a different version. Let's go to the message. See, this is in contemporary English language. Okay. Don't you realize that this is not the way to live? Unjust people who don't care about God will not be joining in his kingdom. Those who use and abuse each other, use and abuse sex, use and abuse the earth and everything in it, don't qualify as citizens in God's kingdom. 
A number of you know from experience what I'm talking about. For not so long ago, you were on that list. Since then, you've been cleaned up and given a fresh start by Jesus, our Master, Messiah, and by our God present in us, the Spirit. All right. Other versions say fornicators. I'm, I just haven't found it yet, okay? But trust me on this. What is the definition of fornication? It's sex before marriage, sex outside of marriage, okay? So, I've seen my daughter mocking people like me. No idea why she does this. The only thing I could imagine why she does this is because she sees other people in my family doing this and she's just joining in the hate train. But my daughter posts online a, a, a mockery type of post that, that makes fun of pe people saying sex is bad. Now this is stupid to see in and of itself because no one says that. So this is an example of people putting words in my mouth or people like me. Christian correctors, admonishers, prophets. This is exactly what a prophet does is corrects people who claim to love God, who have gone astray in their actions. Mockery in and of itself is not Christian behavior. As we see in the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1. Not to go off on a tangent, let's get back on track. Anyone who's on the hate train is the real stupid one. I'll just leave it at that. Do not put words in my mouth that I don't say. I never said sex is bad. I will say sex is good, but it is only allowed by God who created us within legal marriage. So I'm going to give you an example, personal one. I'm dating right now. And one of the most more recent people that I dated had a conversation with me. He was really drilling me with conversations like the whole first date. It was kind of intimidating. Um, I mean, a few questions is perfectly expected, but I mean, he was just hundred question after question, after question, after question, all these heavy stuff. Um, one of his questions was about sex. I believe that sex is very important within marriage. Okay. I agree. So we need to find out if we're sexually compatible. Yeah, that's great. I agree. So what's up? Well, um, what do you think is a sin? Because he called himself a Christian. Um, I only date Christians. What, what, what do you think is a sin sexually? How far would you go with me sexually without being married? Would you, would you hug? Yes. Would you hold hands? Yes. Would you kiss? Yes. Would you make out? Yes. Would you do oral sex? That's where I draw the line. No. Why? Why wouldn't you do oral sex? That's not real sex. Um, because if I do oral sex... Um, you might not know the history of who you're talking to, but I know that is opening a door to sex. Okay. If you do oral sex, there's a 99% chance you're going to do real sex. And I don't want to open that door. I don't want to go down that path. I don't want to be tempted that bad. So no, that is where I draw the line and that is what I don't do. He goes to me, of course. Because he was wanting to fornicate while claiming to be a saved Christian. And I brought that 
that up actually because my ex-husband had the same mentality even though he might not have called himself a Christian he may I don't really remember but when I was dating my ex-husband I told him because I've, I've always had this stance on sex and fornication is wrong and sex is only allowed within marriage and um, I, I told my ex-husband when I was dating him that I don't want to have sex with you um, I just want to date you without having sex with you. I was drawing a line, a boundary. And he responded with, that's not acceptable. If you're going to date me, I have to have sex with you. I can't date you if you don't have sex with me. Well, I was in a real position where I was kind of between a rock and a hard place. And I compromised my morals. Eventually after some years, I had a conviction that I was sinning and I wanted to be right in the eyes of God because of how much I love God and I am a real true Christian. So we got married for the one reason of being right in God's eyes and not fornicating anymore. It turned out that I had married the wrong person, obviously, because I should have really opened my eyes and seen the signs of who he really was back when we were dating. But at that time, you know, 15 years ago or something like that, I was young enough where I thought it was okay to quote unquote compromise while dating. I thought that dating required compromise, so I compromised. Big mistake. Never going to do that again. Um, there is a Christian musician, singer, celebrity in the 60s. And he has an album called No Compromise. I'm looking it up. His name is Keith Green. <laughs> I love his music. He died in a car crash, unfortunately, but Keith Green was a great Christian singer in the 70s. Sorry, 70s. Yeah, his um album was called No Compromise. <laughs> Maybe I'll title this video No Compromise. That's a great title. So um, the world today believes that it is okay to have sex before marriage. But it's really not. As God's prophetess, I am telling you, fornication is sin. It is not okay. Am I saying that sex is bad? No. I'm not. I'm saying that sex before marriage is bad. Why is sex before marriage bad? <laughs> well, we have STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. Did you know that if everyone in the world obeyed God and lived according to his directives and didn't fornicate, we could eradicate sexually transmitted diseases off the earth. If every man and every woman were married, one, one man, one woman, whatever, even, you know, homosexual marriage allowed, whatever, even if it doesn't necessarily have to be one man, one woman, I'm talking about for the, for the sake of the idea here, 
eradicating sexual diseases, okay. If one person had one person for life, which is what marriage is, we could literally, scientifically, erase sexually transmitted diseases off the planet. Fornication is what causes sexually transmitted diseases and adultery, of course, going outside of marriage, cheating. Okay. One of the most messed up, horrible things in the, on earth, in the world, you could ever imagine is to be married to someone who cheats and gets a sexually transmitted disease with the person he cheats with and then comes home to his wife or husband or whatever and has sex with them and gives them a disease. There's nothing more I have to say to try to get you to understand that sexual sin causes sexual disease. I wonder why that is. Maybe because the Bible is true and God is true. Why does God say don't sin sexually? Maybe because God loves you and doesn't want you to get a disease. Also, you're going to have broken hearts when you fornicate. You're going to have confusion. You're going to have lowered self-esteem, lowered self-worth, depression, suicide. Confusion, if I hadn't already said that. You're going to have children that will feel unwanted, rejected, neglected, without a good, healthy parent relationship role model. You're going to get all this stuff when you fornicate. But you think it's worth it because you want to get your rocks off. Get your rocks off within marriage as much as you want. I guess I'm done. This has gone on pretty long. I'm at 17 minutes and 45 seconds. I'm going to end with a prayer. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father God, forgive our sins, cleanse us, and wash us brand new. We need to be drenched in your grace, love, and mercy. Lead us to fully receive you and your ways. Grow in us your awesome power. Amen. Everyone, therefore, that heareth these words of mine and doeth them shall be likened upon a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Matthew seven twenty four. I wonder why I've never seen any pastors in any churches talking about this topic in church. Because it rubs people the wrong way. Because the sheep of their flock who go to church <clears throat> think it's okay to fornicate. And they don't want to lose any members of their congregation if they were to speak out as a pastor, shepherd of the sheep. The fornication is a sin, even though it's brought up multiple times in the Bible. As a Christian, you should take the Bible seriously. Everyone, therefore, that heareth these words of mine and doeth them shall be likened unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. Matthew seven twenty four. Amen. Peace.